So, guy, congratulations on the film. I had a great time. I, I totally identified with uh, Adam, James' character. Uh, I think, uh, well, I felt for him. How did you accomplish that? Thank you so much, first of all. Um, and again, just to echo, uh, apologies when we were like, no. Um, I think for me, I mean, I was thinking about the character journey in, 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 in I think all of us have four different uh, images of ourselves, right? So I always thought about the character having the, the version of, of who he truly is, um, the version of the person that he would have liked to be and he's trying to project out to the world successfully or unsuccessfully. So it's like a facade that he's putting in front of himself. Um, then there is the version of you that people see from the outside which is a different thing because it's their perspective. In his case, uh, most closely related with his relationship with his wife, with Rina. And finally, there is the best version of yourself that you, you could possibly be if you just knew what it was or how to get there, you know? So in a way, I thought about um, James's performance and the, the character of Adam in the film as if going through those stations, you know? Like if you really think about the, the progression, it's like we meet him, um, alternately between the person he truly is and the person he's kind of trying to be. And then gradually you, can, you start experiencing him from, from uh, Rina and, uh, and Donald's perspective, if you will, and Maria's perspective. And eventually you get to meet a version of himself that he could have been, you know, if he was just more kind of at peace with himself, so. Um, you know, yeah, it's kind of sad that uh... The film is almost a documentary. <laughs> no, I mean it because we're so what's happening in the world now. I, I get you. Man. We're very close to a situation like that. Um, you know, this is another thing because I feel I'm wondering. There's one thing I'm wondering, which is I was I'm constantly thinking if I finish the film uh, a little earlier. How would people, because now you cannot separate the two anymore. So everybody I speak to that have watched the movie, and rightfully so, it's, it's so uh, eerie that it kind of mirrors what's going on right now. And, you know, I live in LA. I don't know uh, if you guys are here or not, but, or in California. But like this week was the first time in my life that I was checking the air index quality before getting out of the house. So I was like, even that is happening right now. It's insane. Um, but I think for me, I mean, one thing that, that gave birth to a lot of the kind of sci-fi things in the movie, I was just trying to look at things that, are, that exist right now and, and, you know, poke fun at them and so like kind of push them to the next envelope. So, you know, obviously the, the one easy scene to kind of explain that, that uh, logic is the, the Adam coming back home and his kids are like all inside the virtual realm. You know, it's not... Uh, it's not entirely uh, unreal that th this happened even before the pandemic or whatever, where you'd come home and you, and, and, or on the weekend and you turn your back on your kids and they're like in their devices or in their tablet or whatever. Like they're so, you know, kids today are so kind of hooked up on the, on the social networks or on the, on the sort of like virtual existence, even if it's still, you know, semi uh, uh, open. So you could still see them, you know, but I, uh, it, uh, not, well, I really like the film. I like the way you walk us through a really claustrophobic world. But then the only time that we open up into beautiful scenes are when we are connected. Like when uh, Adam goes to the beach with his girlfriend. Yeah. I, I just thought if you're going to have a fantasy, um, you know, when you're in that world, I, I felt like, you know, obviously not being able to experience the sun and, you know, this kind of image of a girl in a bikini on the beach and all that kind of stuff it's in the world that he lives in. It's not, it's not just the girl, the whole, the whole scenery is impossible to kind of um, recreate. And he was just coming off the, coming off finding his wife in the bathtub, so sort of like recreating the, the version of this for herself. I thought this is the world he lives in. This is the world he wants to be in. This is, you know, um, so yeah, that was very deliberate. And I also thought it was, it was, I thought we had to show, in the case of seeing her, I really wanted to explain his need for, for uh, 
personal refuge, but I wasn't interested in seeing the day-to-day -day virtual world that he's part of. I thought that that was better served to kind of be outside and see him from an outside view a little bit, you know, to the way he actually looks to the absolute truth of the nature of our planet, you know. The, the, the structure, the power structure and the power, I mean, the world is run by this superpower structure that knows everything about us. It's not too far from reality, I think, at least from the reality we live in America with this guy in the White House. It's scary. Yeah, I mean, like, let, let's, hope, let's, hope it, let's hope it's temporary, right? I mean, we still have a chance. No, I mean, look, I, I, I feel, you know, I didn't grow up here. Um, and this is, this is a very interesting thing you're raising just without getting into politics, because it, I don't even think it's about politics. It's not about Republicans or Democrats or like, it's not even about political beliefs. I think it's about humanity. And I think a lot of the th things that, you know, the people that resent that, that world we live in right now, in part, are resenting this idea that we lost the sense of, of uh, kind of human conduct, that it's the, 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 the discussion or the way we interact with each other. And that's very much in the core of the film as well. It's like, and I do think technology affects that. When you have, and he's not the first one to do it, but when you have the president of the United States, which is the most powerful country in the world still, constantly going on Twitter. I mean, it started even with Obama, I believe. Like, what, what is that? What's going on with the world? Like, people are being put on trial on Twitter right now. Like, you know, you have a justice system. Even if you've done a terrible thing, I want you to go and get your day in court. I don't want us to be kind of like the mob, the unseen mob online, you know what I mean? So. Certainly, I think it's part, parts of it we're living through right now. So, Guy, is this, is this the real you or a clone of yourself right now? Oh, right now. <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Is that you? Um, I'm hoping, you know what, I'll be yeah, honest with you. And I think that that's, that's a very honest question that I can give. I think that when I was younger, I very much was a person, like I'm sure a lot of the people that, that might be watching this, that wanted to be someone in the eyes of other people. So it's like, you know, consciously or subconsciously, I was constantly trying to kind of act a certain role. I've been working on it for, for many, many years. I don't think it's easy to do and I don't think I've achieved it yet, but I'm trying to, to be really me in every interaction that I have with other human beings. It's not easy. Certainly not with your kids, it's not easy, but we're trying, you know. It's hard, to, it's hard to cover everybody's expectations. It's better to be who you are. Exactly, exactly. And if you do that, I think by and large people respond well to that. You know, if, you, if they sense your sincerity about the way you carry yourself, I think people tend to, and as long as you're kind, I mean, I think it's also okay to be critical, to be passionate about an idea you have or like god knows there's so many you know when you're a filmmaker you you experience a lot of the wrath of people that didn't get your artistic intent but i think you can always distinguish between people who know how to do it with class and with with kindness and and you like those people versus people who are carrying some inner sort of like demon or something and they're just kind of you uh, know well I was very impressed by, I always, I mean, the Roy Lindo, Mr. Donald Stein. Yeah, he's so, a phenomenal actor, man. He's just like a... So elegant, so well cast. Uh, can you he, talk about him a little? He was awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, first of all, I, I know a lot of people say that, but honest to God, he was, uh, you know, maybe he was one of two or three actors I thought could do the role and that's it. Because I had this in mind. I wanted to cast someone um, that could could play kind of the smartest man alive on the one hand and still be kind of a virile, strong male character on the other. And, and, and it's like, usually that's not our expectation when we're thinking about kind of scientists in a, you know, locked in a basement somewhere or whatever. So definitely, um, you know, I really wanted him to play. I was very, very thrilled that he agreed to do this. And I got to say, 
it's every every bit as advertised. He came in, he's, he's a consummate professional and he gives you everything he's got. Like when you work with him, it's like you're getting caught in the Delroy universe. It's like he's, he's, he's getting, he's almost like as a director, he's demanding 100% from you, uh, which is a very refreshing thing in Hollywood, you know. It's also when, uh, not only I don't know, but when I saw him on the screen, I was like, wow, I, <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, no, he's amazing. And I think, I actually think he's going to win an Academy Award this year. Uh, unfortunately, not for, necessarily for this film, but for the, the Five Bloods, I think is, I don't know if you've seen it, what he's done there. I mean, it'll be, it'll be uh, daylight robbery if they don't give it to him, I think. But that, that monologue in the end, it's unbelievable. And, uh, and wait. Now, how is the pandemic affecting your filmmaking? Besides, uh... um, so we'll see, because you know, so far I've been—I don't want to say lucky, but a little bit lucky in the sense that I finished the film about a month into the pandemic. So I was already—I was done editing. I was done with a lot of the VF. I didn't have so much left to do when this whole thing started. So, you know, obviously we took a choice uh, to not sit on the movie and wait till all this is done or whatever, but rather felt like we wanted to just go out there and kind of bring it to the world. Um, so it affected us in that way. I mean, the film was, was supposed to go out in theaters, whatever, but again, I feel, I felt the timing was perfect for this movie right now and, and, I, and I wanted it to be out there. And now I have a couple of projects I've been attached to direct that um, they're not gonna go this year, but I'm I'm hoping that they'll they'll go at least one of them in March. Um and again you're kind of sitting at home and you're talking to your producers and you know every day you say, Oh, we can go shoot it there, it's very safe, and then a month goes by and that place goes into lockdown or something. <laughs> so uh two more questions. One yeah, of course. One, uh it was very satisfying to to see the honesty and the humanity of James playing Adam. And uh, that gave me hope uh, it, that he symbolizes the, the qualities of human beings in your opinion. Mm -hmm. in I, that, that's exactly true. Like what I, I mean, in essence, the, the, even though the film has all these things going on around it, what I was trying to do is take somebody who's closer to us, a human being from our time, if you will, and kind of throw him into that environment. I know. <laughs> Yeah, and he's fighting for us, you know, he's fighting for us to kind of hold on to what we have. And I don't know, man, I got to say, like, with everything that's going on, um, the global warming thing, for instance, I do think this, these are things, especially as a parent, I think that we, we, we need to start paying serious attention to all this stuff. It's like, it's not a joke anymore, you know? It's not a um, joke. No. Also, okay, and then uh, I want to know, um, Shit, I forgot. No, wait. I, ah, okay. I know. The the you know all the streaming platforms, they're becoming wonderful vehicles for films within a a reality. I mean, I cannot go to a movie theater. I love that, but I I can see your film at home, which is great. What do you think of that? Is it damaging? I mean, I I am not. I'm not. This is a, again a funny thing. I'm not a purist in the sense that, and this actually goes so much in line with the film. I think. Not everything about technology is bad. As it's just about a, kind of having a healthy measure of things. And, and I don't also, I don't think we should hold on to the, to the, uh, to nostalgia. I think we should hold on to our, to our essence, you know? So for me, as a filmmaker, I'm okay with this. I feel like my hope is to get to, to find my audience. I know that my films, the films that I'm, I make, maybe they're not for everybody, but I think there's, a large audience out there like myself that wants to 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 see thought provoking films i do think that the streamers and this kind of uh growing digital way of distributing films uh, makes it sometimes for filmmakers like me more easy to find the, the the our audience so i think that's a very good thing i agree that there is still a beautiful thing about going to the theater where you sit in the dark and if nothing else, you can't answer your phone or you can't get up to the, to, the, to the bathroom or nobody interrupts the experience. So at least the level of concentration is there. Um, but I'm not one that is like feeling like if, if, if movie theaters will become the new Broadway tomorrow where like the only thing you see there is Marvel movies and 
the last uh, year's Academy Award winners, so be it. As long as I have a platform where I can share my vision with the world, and then I'm happy, you know.